Okay, so we got the voltage control board inked up with the paint pens. And uh, it looks pretty, pretty shoddy, but uh, it'll actually come out okay. We'll have to go back and, and touch up the, the cuts in between the .1 header. It's pretty hard to do that because you've only got 50 thou on either side of the hole. And that's really not a lot for for uh, human um, human handwork uh, if you're not real good at this kind of stuff. And I'm not a professional engraver or anything, so I'll have to go back over that with a, a sharp tool and clean out the space in between the two. Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend getting white pens for this. Black is a lot better because when the pen clogs, you're wiping it on the paper, trying to clean the tip, and you can't really see the white paint on the white paper. But uh, we'll give this a shot. We just mixed up our, our secret sauce here. So we're gonna, we're gonna do this side first. You can see that we would do the other side first, but we want to we want to um, get maximum removal as fast as possible here because we don't want to over etch. And it's very easy to over etch, so we just want to make sure that we get as much copper removal as we can here. You see we're turning green. Copper's coming into solution. So I'm gonna put this on pause and do the board and then we'll come back. Okay. The reaction is doing its runaway thing right now. You can see how green it's turned. So we'll just let it do its thing for a little bit here. And hopefully we don't have any over etch. If we do, we can do repair jumpers, but it's, it's hard when there's no copper to work with. So we're gonna pause it again and then we'll come back. We started breaking through on the paint a little bit here and there. So I use the brush to dab it instead of aggressively wipe it down. So that helps prevent over etch. You see we still need to go back and uh, cut in between the traces there. But we'll, we'll do mechanical cleanup there. And um, see, it, you know, it didn't come out too bad. So now we'll take the steel wool to it and you'll see what we got, okay? So I'm going to pause it one more time here. See that? You don't even have one broken trace in there. Which is pretty damn good. And that's because before we started putting the paint down, we scratched up the board with sandpaper. So you want to use like 400 grit to, to uh, key up the surface. Because it's, it's, really, it's really smooth. It's hard for the paint to, to key to it. So you want you want some surface roughness for the paint to stick to it. If it's too smooth, the paint's just gonna chip off. And really 400 is probably not enough of a uh, aggressive surface for the paint to bite into too because when I sand it, I only go in one direction. So that's good for a line going perpendicular to it, but it's very smooth going in the grain. So you're going to want something that's somewhat aggressive. You can see how the paint, when we when we try and clean up the lines, how the paint chips. See, that's from the paint chipping. Uh, and it causes the line to be very ragged. And you can see where I cleaned off some of the, where I went over, and the paint was still there. But we can go back and we can, we can just scratch that off with an X-Acto. Um, but... For a quick, quick turn, homemade board, 
that's not high frequency that's just general purpose this is really pretty quick 10-15 minutes in the etch maybe not even that long it takes about an hour to do this kind of layout um, the other the current control board that's gonna be a lot harder that's gonna take probably two days to do but um, we'll go ahead and do the cleanup that'll probably take about 30 minutes and then we can start to populate the board and test it and have it pretty much ready for use in two days versus waiting for a vendor to to send you your board and the CAD and all that other stuff that you have to do. So, it's not a bad deal. <laughs>